Hi, in this video we're looking at types of elements. Uh, the periodic table is laid out so that there's kind of two major sections, but four sections overall. Uh, most of the periodic table is what we call a metal. A lot of the periodic table is what we call non-metals. And then we have this little sliver staircase of metalloids. And then finally this corner down here of, of really unknown elements. They're so unstable that they break down before we have a chance to figure out what kind of element they behave like. So let's start just with metals because the metals uh, are most of the periodic table, something like 75, 80% of the periodic table. So metals are uh, shiny. Sometimes that's referred to as luster. They're lustrous. Uh, metals are also conductive of both electricity and heat, uh, thermal conductors and electrical conductors. Metals are generally opaque, meaning they're not see-through. You can't see through them. A wall would be opaque, whereas a window would be transparent. Um, and now let's talk a little bit more about the chemistry of metals. For reasons we haven't yet talked about, metals are a fan of losing electrons. They'd rather lose electrons than gain them um, in pursuit of filling their, their outermost shell. And that's a concept we'll talk about uh, as time goes forward. When they lose electrons, that means that their charge has gone positive. So metals almost exclusively form positive uh, charges, meaning they become cations when they're charged. Um, and then finally, metals are solids at room temperature with really one notable exception, and that's mercury. Mercury is a liquid at room temperature. Okay, let's move on to nonmetals. Nonmetals are, in many cases, kind of just the opposite of metals. They're dull, they're not shiny, they're non conductive, they're good insulators, um, and they're brittle. Metals are known to kind of be able to be beaten into thin sheets. With nonmetals, not the case. They're pretty brittle and they tend to break down pretty easily. Uh, this is the opposite. Nonmetals do gain electrons or they tend to gain electrons. Uh, and when that happens, they become anions. They become negative ions because they've gained electrons. And keep in mind, those are negative. Now, there is one thing I want to talk about with nonmetals, and that's this misconception that nonmetals are all gases. And that's not the case. Many of them are gases at room temperature. Um, oxygen and nitrogen are great examples of that. Uh, but carbon is actually a solid at room temperature. The stuff in your pencil lead is carbon. Uh, sulfur is also a solid that's at room temperature. And of course, at room temperature, we could have a liquid nonmetal, and that would be bromine. Bromine is a liquid at room temperature. So is it fair to say that nonmetals are gases? No, it isn't. But there is one reason why a lot of students think that nonmetals are gases. And this final column is kind of like the, the prize of all the elements in the periodic table. If they can be just like these noble gases, that means they are very happy and stable. The noble gases are all technically nonmetals, but you can kind of think of them like they're in a, a, a brand or a class all of their own. Uh, reasons for that, again, I don't want to spill the beans on this, but reasons for that we will talk about in this class. Metalloids are our final major piece, and these are kind of funky. I tend to stay away from these in a first year chemistry course because they behave more like metals or nonmetals depending on the situation they're in. Uh, and so I'll tend to steer clear of these, but it's a good idea to, to know which elements are metalloids. There it is, types of elements, metals and nonmetals are the two big headline names. And then, of course, we have metalloids that kind of do a little bit of both. And there are some out there we just still don't know much about. Thanks.